story time on how I got nasty with my older sister's boyfriend while she was sleeping. Okay, so boom, let's jump right into it. So I have an older sister who's 18 and I'm 16. Her boyfriend, George, let's call him George because that's his name. Well, George is 20. He is very attractive. I'm talking fine. Every time he comes over, we flirt with our eyes and whenever my sister leaves the room. And my relationship with my sister isn't bad at all. She's older than me, so she brings me places, gets me food, and helps me out with homework. You know, normal sister duties. So I don't have anything against her, but her man is just so fine. I just really don't care about my sister's feelings whatsoever. Like, at all. So after our flirting became constant between us, things got real. My sister and her boyfriend were spending the night together, but George, the boyfriend, waited for my sister to fall asleep. And when she fell asleep, things got real. Like for part two. Part two on how I got nasty with my older sister's boyfriend while she was sleeping. Okay, so boom, like I said, George, the boyfriend, waited for my sister to fall asleep. And once she fell asleep, he came over to my room and yeah, we did the nasty. Like literally with my sister in the room next door we literally slept together when we were done he went back to my sister's room and she never found out two months later they broke up because he cheated with someone else and we never seen him again and six years later my sister still doesn't know what i did should i tell her story time on how dating a white boy landed me in jail okay so boom let's get right into it so i'm a black woman and i'm 23 years old my caucasian boyfriend is 25 years old and we've been together for about five months so this next information might seem mean but it's necessary to understand this story my caucasian boyfriend was absolutely broke jobless carless and living with his parents but of course he lied to me about all of that and i didn't find out until he started staying at my apartment every single day i would ask him where's your car and he would say i got into an accident and it's in the shop i would ask how come you're here and not working and he would say he works from home i would even ask how come you're never at your place and we always hang out at my place he said my place is just more homey and clean because i'm a girl okay so this is how the police gets involved i came home from work and he was on the couch playing games doing nothing and the first thing he says to me is i'm hungry there's no food Y'all know where this is going, like for part two. Part two on how dating a white boy landed me in jail. Okay, so boom, like I said, we established that my Caucasian boyfriend was absolutely broke, jobless, carless, and living with his parents. I came home from work and he was on a couch playing games doing nothing. And the first thing he says to me is, I'm hungry, there's no food. Not a, hey baby, how was work baby, how was your day? Nope, just I'm hungry and there's no food. I get annoyed because I've been dealing with this for three months, so I tell him go get some food or go make some food yourself then he said you keep talking like that and you gonna end up single at this point there was no holding back i exploded i yelled at him saying you literally lied about who you are you don't work you have no money no car and you tried to forcefully move yourself into my place without my permission you're lucky you're not single matter of fact you're single now pack your stuff and get out he gets mad and starts breaking everything like for part three part three on how dating a white boy landed me in jail okay so boom like i said i break up with my caucasian boyfriend and he is not having it he starts breaking everything and he starts calling me all types of names that's mad disrespectful he won't stop and i get scared so i call the cops i have a degree and a good paying job so i live in a suburban area that's how i met him in the first place so in my area the cops come in less than five minutes when i opened the door for the cops he was still breaking things and screaming at me but the cops immediately handcuffed me and separated me from my ex then they asked me why am i disturbing the peace at his home yeah they asked assumed that this was his place and not mine i was just a mad crazy girlfriend surely a woman of color can't afford this place i tried to explain that it was him who was invading and trashing my place but they put me in jail for a day until the next day where they figured out that he was actually the problem in my home like for part four part four on how dating a white boy landed me in jail okay so boom like i said i spent a day in jail until they realized that he was the problem and that was my place they took me back home and escorted him out of my place yeah he lived Literally stayed there mind you they never handcuffed him they only talked to him they finally took him out of my place something they should have done the first time and i never talked to my ex again no matter how hard he's been trying wish me luck on my case because i'm coming for that department am i the asshole for refusing to let a female student use the bathroom okay so boom i know this title makes me look like a major asshole but hear me out I, male, 46, work at a high school as a PE teacher and recently I noticed that a student of mine, let's call her A, stopped participating in class. Her excuse would always be the same. Mr. Smith, that's me. I'm on my period. Can I please go to the bathroom? This carried on every PE lesson for one month when our unit was dancing and I had to give each student a mark. 
At this point, A was concerningly behind everyone in our unit and I had nothing to grade her on. I was getting increasingly annoyed and up until this point, I had never told her no. And when she goes to the bathroom, she comes back after 45 minutes. So once again, she asked if she could use the bathroom because she was on her period and I just snapped. If you're on your period this often multiple times in two months, then I honestly think you need help. Am I the asshole for refusing to let a female student use the bathroom? Part two. Okay, so boom, like I said, if you're on your period this often multiple times in two months, then I honestly think you need medical help. I have to grade you. Come up and participate. Later that day, at around 17 o'clock, I was placed on temporary leave because of the complaints I got from A's parents, and A had also gotten her friends and their parents to complain. I was being called sexist and multiple other names by the student parents, and I was honestly so confused. And multiple of the student's parents threatened the principal to turn to social media or even enroll the girls in another school because of me because they felt unsafe with a sexist teacher. Once again, I'm a male, 46. Am I the asshole? And what should be the next action to regain the parents' respect? This story tells about how my best friend almost got it kidnapped. By the way, we're calling her Aaliyah. So back in the summer, Aaliyah was talking to a guy she met through Instagram, and she was talking to him for about two months, but they never actually met up. Aaliyah really liked him, and they planned a day when and where they go out to meet. The guy she was talking to asked if she wanted to come over to his house to chill. By the way, we're calling him Isaiah. And he wasn't far, so Aaliyah came to me and asked if I wanted to come with her. And I couldn't have her go alone if she was nervous, so I told her I'd go. So the day come, and we go around 7, 8 o'clock. When we get to Isaiah's house, he welcomes us in. And when we walked into the living room, there were like 20 guys all around his house. We're so confused because Isaiah never mentioned that there would be other company. We sat down on his couch, and everything was fine. We played games with everyone, which was pretty chill, until one of Isaiah's friends sat next to me and rubbed on my lip and asked me to come upstairs with him and another guy. It gets really crazy after this. Let me know if you guys want to part two. This is part two of how my best friend almost got us kidnapped. So after we get to Isaiah's house there's like 20 guys walking around his place we start playing games and i say after two hours one of isaiah's friends sit next to me and rub my legs and asked me to come upstairs with him and another guy i immediately push him and told him to stop touching me he gets up and grits me up like i'm some sort of rag doll saying i disrespected him and my body just reacted so i slapped him in the face my friend Aliyah gets up and kicks him and tells him to get away he got mad and walked away and told other guys in the room that we were weird. I was so mad and I told Aaliyah I was ready to go and that everyone is acting sus. She says, okay. So Aaliyah walks to Isaiah and she tells him we're about to go. He asks her for what? And she explains that I feel uncomfortable. He laughs and says that we're not going anywhere and that him and his boys were getting laid tonight. Y'all let me know if y'all want a part three. This is part three of how my best friend almost got us kidnapped. So Aaliyah tells Isaiah that we're ready to go and he basically said that we can't leave and that him and his friends were getting laid tonight. Aaliyah says, well, you better call up some hoes because we're leaving. So we gathered up our things and tried to walk out and Isaiah yanked Aaliyah's leg and when she fell, Isaiah jumped on top of her saying that we can't go anywhere and all the guys start crowding around us. So I kicked Isaiah in the head and pulled Aaliyah up to go and she's like, run. So we're running and a couple of guys start chasing after us one of them were really fast and catches up to us he picks me up and starts taking me back to isaiah's house and i'm sitting there punching and kicking and screaming that's all the time i have let me know if you guys want to part four this is part four of how my best friend almost got us kidnapped like i said earlier we ran out of isaiah's house and one of the guys picked me up and tried to take me back to his house i don't know what else to do so i scratched his face and he dropped me Aaliyah pulls out her taser and tries to tase him. There were other guys that were running up to us and Aaliyah let it be known that if they got any closer that she was going to try to tase them. When they finally decided to leave us alone, they were telling us we were weird, ugly, calling us out of our names and just being rude and just saying rude stuff. But we ran home. When we finally got back to Aaliyah's house, she was so mad because she thought Isaiah was going to be a good guy. She was upset that that happened. So she made a plan to get back at them. She made an anonymous call to the police saying that Isaiah's house was filled up with drugs, saying that they had weed and cocaine in the floorboards and in the walls. She gave them the address and everything. And that was the end of it. But I wonder how crazy Isaiah's house looks now. This story time is how I found out my toxic ex-best friend pretended to be a guy so she could date me. In other words, I was catfished. So back in February when the coronavirus first started out, everyone had to stay home. My best friend at the time was for calling Tina or the brother had caught the virus and I felt bad for the family because they could also be infected. Me, on the other hand, I lived with my older sister who recently had me niece and my two grandparents. I, I told Tina the only way we'd be able to talk was through phone and call and text messages. 
because I was afraid that she would infect me and I would infect my family. As weeks go by, she tells me that she misses me and of course I miss her also. At one point, she starts to get jealous because I start texting other people and from there, I started to distance myself but not purposely. One day, I got a DM from this really cute guy, which we're calling Bryson. He came up with a corny line, but I thought it was cute. He was really nice, and we talked as though we knew each other for years. As the number of cases of coronavirus go down, I tell him we should go on a date. Guys, this is when it gets weird. This is part two of how I found out my toxic ex-best friend pretended to be a guy so she could date me. So after we talked for about four months, I tell him that we should go out and finally meet face to face. He's like, I don't know yet. If I go somewhere, I'd like to take you somewhere really nice. So I might have to save up. I was like, we don't need to do anything fancy. I just want to finally meet you. He's like, I need more time. So I was patient and waited a whole month. I told him, let's meet. He's like, I'm not ready yet. And I said, if we don't go out this weekend, then I'm done talking to you. So he finally agreed to go to the movie theater with me. When we finally meet, I was so surprised because he was short. I expected him to be taller by now. His pictures looked like he was taller. He had a black hoodie on and his face was partially covered up. I was like, are you good? His voice was raspy. He says he lost his voice. When the movie was over, we got up and left the theater. When it was time to leave, we gave hugs, and he kissed me. As he's hugging me, I feel breaths. It gets really weird after this. Part 3 will be up soon. This is part 3 of how I found out my toxic best friend pretended to be a guy so she could date me. So after the movie was over, we stepped outside, and I said goodbye. He hugs and kisses me, and I immediately feel breasts. I'm like, what the? And it pushes him away, and his hoodie flew off. Well, her hoodie flew off. I found out that this guy was my best friend, Tina. I'm like, what the hell, Tina? Why are you here? She's like, I'm so sorry. I asked her again, why are you here? She then explains to me that she pretended to be the guy I was talking to because she wanted to get closer to me. I was freaked out because I thought I was talking to someone else this whole time for five months. I got so wrapped up over this guy that didn't even exist and told things to that I never told anyone. But then I got so disgusted because I couldn't believe my own best friend would do that. And I feel like if we never met, I probably would still be talking to this fake man. At the end, I completely blocked her and stopped being her friend. My dad tried to be in a polyamorous relationship with me and my little sister story time. Okay, so boom, let's jump right into it. So my dad was always a little weird with me and my little sister. He loved us, but it wasn't that fatherly love. He made subtle moves to me and my little sister, but as time went on, he started getting bold. One day, my mom was in the hospital. I don't really remember what for, maybe giving birth, I don't know. But while she was out, my dad came to me and my little sister's room and he wanted to tell us something. Obviously that something was telling slash forcing me and my sister to secretly get into a polyamory relationship with our dad where he would do inappropriate things to the both of us and of course me and my sister wanted no parts but he wasn't asking he was telling he then tried to force me and my sister to you know do things and i'm not down for that obviously so he attacked us like and follow for part two my dad tried to be in a polyamorous relationship with me and my little sister story time part two okay so boom like i said he tried to force me and my little sister to, you know, do things. And we weren't down for that, obviously, so he attacked us. As he's attacking us, my mom came back home, maybe after giving birth, I don't know. But she came home, saw what my dad was trying to do to us, and immediately stopped him, just in time. My mom called the cops on my dad, and he tried to escape and run away. But he should have ran faster because the cops definitely found him and took him in. That disgusting man is now behind bars, and that's where he needs to stay. My mom tried to have a threesome with me in a chicken coop story time. Okay, so boom, we're gonna go right into this one. So I live with my mom and visit my dad on the weekends. They've been divorced for years, so it's normal. What's not normal is that my mom has a new boyfriend. She seems happy, but I can't help to think she's a little bit desperate for him. She pays for everything. He moved out of his mom house and into ours, and he's always using her car because he doesn't have one. She just does anything to make him happy, and it's just not it. But my mom took it a step too far when to please him she involved me we have a farm and one day i went to go feed the chickens in the chicken coop i walked into the chicken coop and ding 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 you got it my mom was on the floor with her boyfriend on top of him naked i turned away in shock about to walk away and then her boyfriend stops me and says like for part two my mom tried to have a threesome with me in a chicken coop story time part two. Okay, so boom, like I said, my mom was just desperate and she would literally do anything for this man. I walked into the chicken coop to feed the chickens and my mom was there on top of her boyfriend naked. I tried to walk away, but her boyfriend stopped me. 
He said, wait, 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 hold on, hold on. This is perfect. Come join us. I looked at my mom thinking this was a joke, but she just said, come come here, honey. He's been talking about you. He likes the both of us. They're in their 40s and I'm 14. And I just stood there in shock because my mom was really trying to convince me to come sleep with her and her boyfriend. I, of course, did not participate. I told my dad, currently staying with him, and my mom and real dad got into an argument and now are facing legal battles. And I'm just here still shocked that my mom asked me for a threesome in a chicken coop. Hello everyone, this story time is from a follower of mine. She said she liked my story times and wanted to know if I could tell her story time. So here we go. We're calling her Kat because she wanted to stay anonymous and by the way, she's 17. So last year Kat was talking to this guy she met through Tinder which we're calling Mike. Mike seemed like a pretty cool guy and they talked for two months. She followed his Instagram and saw pictures of a baby. She asked who's the child and he told her his little sister. So she didn't think nothing of it. They went out on dates and after six months of talking, they made their relationship official. She would post him, but he never posted her. One day she begged him to post her. And finally he did, but he deleted it after one hour. Mike told her there were a lot of men liking and commenting on the picture and he didn't want her to be a sexual object to them. She believed them, thought it was heroic, and just left the whole situation alone. But the next day she received a message from a girl asking if she was talking to Mike. Kat said yes, and the girl responds that she's his child's mother. This is part two of Kat's story time. After she gets a DM of a girl claiming to be Mike's baby's mother, she immediately texts Mike and asks who she was. Mike responded that she's a family of a friend and that they don't talk no more. He went on about her being crazy for a good hour and why he stays away from her. Kat's still suspicious, so she DMs a girl asking for her number to talk more. Within the first five minutes of talking, she hears a baby crying in the background. She asks who that was, and the girl FaceTime her. And remember how Kat saw pictures of a baby on Mike's Instagram page? Well, which he claimed to be his sister? That was the same baby crying in the background of the FaceTime. Kat Hart immediately drops because she wanted to believe what Mike was saying was true, but she had an instant that there was something that he wasn't telling her. Throughout the conversation, Mike's child's mother, she said they were still messing around, and it was around the same time her and Mike were still together. At the end, she broke up with Mike, and she left out with a broken heart. Story time about the psycho neighbor that stalked me. So, when I graduated college, I moved into a new apartment. When I first got there, I was moving my things in and my neighbor introduced himself and helped me move a couple of things upstairs. After we had got done, he asked for my number, but I told him I wasn't really looking for a relationship. But he said, let's just swap numbers just in case, you know, a fire happens. So I gave him my number and I really didn't think nothing of it. Maybe a week later, he starts knocking on my door and giving me gifts just about every day like teddy bears and flowers. Then maybe about two weeks later, I told him to stop because I wasn't really interested in him. So the next day, I wake up to make coffee and take out trash. When I pass my living room, the teddy bear gift that my neighbor gave me makes a click noise. When I quickly rip the teddy bear open, it's a camera inside. Like for part two about the psycho neighbor that stalked me. So like I said earlier, the teddy bear gift that my neighbor had gave me makes a clicking noise. When I quickly rip the teddy bear open, it's a camera inside and I go into a panic mode. Out of nowhere, there's a knock on my door and it's my neighbor. He says, good morning, it's me again. You left your trash too close to the curb, so I moved it for you. I realized that my door was still open, so I try to run over and lock the door, but he just opens it. I yell at him, telling him to get out. He closes the door behind him and says, that's no way to talk to a neighbor. I start backing up. He looks over and sees that I ripped the teddy bear apart. I didn't know what else to do, so I just ran to my room. And he chases after me and pulls my hair. Like for part three. Part three about the psycho neighbor that stalked me. So he comes in. I run into my room and he chases after me. Before I could get up, he pulls onto my hair and starts dragging me towards the kitchen. I saw the coffee that I had made earlier and I was able to pick it up and throw the hot coffee in his face. He starts screaming loud, and I took that chance to run into my room and lock the door. I immediately start calling the police, and from there, it sounded like he ran out of my apartment. When the cops came, they're doing an investigation, and all the gifts that he gave me all had cameras in them. And when I told them about my neighbor, they did some digging and come to find out that man wasn't even my neighbor. He didn't even live at the apartment complex. Story time on how I accidentally joined a cult 
and the guy who was the head leader, I soon found out that he was a pedophile. At the time, I just graduated high school and I was not planning on going to college. So all I really did was work. At my job, I met this guy, and we're going to call him Devin. Devin was sweet, but he was so into spirituality and connecting with God. We started talking, then dating, and he asked me if I could come to his church. And when I was younger, I used to go to church, but I stopped going. No real reason why, but I thought it was my calling to reconnect with God again. When we go to his church, slash, aka, the cult, when I first go in, there's like 10 people in the church, and it was run down. It looked like we were in someone's house. When we walked down the aisles, Devin introduced me to their head leader, which they called Father God. He told me that my clothes were too revealing, and he literally slashed my ass and laughed. Like for part two. This is part two of how I accidentally joined the cult, and the guy who was head charge was a pedophile. So like I said earlier, we met his pastor, which they called Father God. The first thing he do is basically say that I look like a slut because the clothes I was wearing and slapped my ass. I looked at Devin, the guy that took me to their church, aka the cult. He laughs and tells their father God that next time he would tell me about their dress code. After that, we go sit down and I tell him that I was ready to go. He tells me to hold on and just please listen to the service. Anyways, when their father God starts service, he goes in about women and what they should wear. Tell them the only way to be a pure woman is to obey their man and blah, blah, blah and dress godly. Just the most insane things ever. And everyone in there were like hypnotized and catching holy ghosts, jumping up and down, rolling on floors, passing out, crying. Their father God calls me up and asks if he could use me as an example. When I stand up, he fills my breath saying that I'm a temptation for married men. Life for part three. Story time on how my boyfriend got my mom pregnant. Okay, so boom, let's jump right into it. My disgusting boyfriend and backstabbing mom were unusually close. They would talk and text on the phone all the time. But of course, I didn't think my mother would hook up with my boyfriend. To make a long story short, when my boyfriend would come over and hang out, there's times where I would go to ballet class. And my boyfriend and mom would be home alone. I would be in ballet class and my dad would be at work. And I bet you think I found out. Nope. My mom was pregnant and I was thinking my dad was obviously the father. And of course, at first, my dad thought so too. Oh, but no. Once my sister came, my dad was suspicious of my mom, so he did a paternity test. The results came back and guess what? It wasn't his. Oh, but it gets worse. My dad walked in on my boyfriend and my mom. Like for part two. Part two on how my boyfriend got my mom pregnant. Okay, so boom, like I said, my dad didn't think my new sister was his, so he took a paternity test. He was right, it was not his. But what takes the cake, even though my mom wasn't supposed to be doing the do, when my dad pulled up with the paternity test early, he walked in and seen my boyfriend and my mom in bed. My dad was more so disgusted than even shocked. My dad told me I was shocked, I cried, but then me and my dad moved out together and now I have a new amazing stepmom. I don't talk to my sister and my boyfriend eventually left my mom, so now she just looks stupid and alone. And my boyfriend is a bum, so he has literally nothing going on for himself. My dad and I don't talk to my mom, but I kind of feel bad for my sister. It's not her fault, but I don't want a relationship with her. Am I wrong? Am I the asshole for telling my friend her son is ugly? Okay, so boom, let's jump right into it so me and my friend been friends for over a decade 12 years to be exact we literally do everything together but that changed when she met her boyfriend now my friend is really pretty but her boyfriend not so much he is very unattractive but she fell in love with him regardless me and my friend are really close so we joke about her dating an ugly guy all the time his nickname is literally Ugly Boy when we talk about him in code. Well, my friend got pregnant by Ugly Boy and got an ugly baby. A month after her delivery, I was over at her house visiting. Her baby was sleeping, so we just stood over him smiling. And that's when I said it. Well, too bad he got his looks from his daddy. She looked at me in shock and said, what do you mean? I laughed saying, I mean, girl, he's definitely not cute. Big mistake. Like, her Am I the asshole for telling my best friend her baby is ugly? Okay, so boom, like I said, when I came over, the baby was sleeping, so we just stood over him smiling. And that's when I said it. Well, too bad he got his looks from his daddy. She looked at me shocked saying, what do you mean? I laughed and said, I mean, girl, he's definitely not the cutest. She kicked me out and hasn't talked to me since. 
this. That's never happened in our friendship before. I feel bad, but I just thought since we were comfortable saying her boyfriend was ugly and that his code name is literally ugly boy, I thought she wouldn't mind calling her son ugly too. So am I? I was raped by my mom best friend story time. Okay, so boom. I'm a 14 year old boy who lives with my mom and unfortunately my dad passed away. He was serving our country and now my mom is a single mother. Now my mom kind of sucks as a mom. She really doesn't pay attention to me. She neglects me and leaves me home alone a lot while she goes out doing whatever. And she's usually out with her best friend who I knew since I was 10 years old. So my mom best friend is a man and I actually thought my mom and him would end up together before he violated me and took advantage of me. One day my mom was out once again doing God knows what. He came over. And yes of course he has his own keys because literally no boundaries were set by my mom well i was in the living room watching a movie and he sat next to me and said your mom's not gonna be back till way later i said okay confused as to why he was telling me that and said thank you then he started rubbing on my thighs like my mom best friend raped me story time part two okay so boom like i said he started rubbing on my thighs and you know how people who are dating or into each other kind of start off slow until things progress and gets freaky yeah he didn't do that and he also didn't show no mercy he rubbed on my thighs and when i asked him what he was doing he got on top of me and held me down with his strength then he started kissing me i started crying saying please stop and trying to fight back but i couldn't get him off <sighs> he was a pretty big guy let me remind you guys that I am a 14 year old little boy and I'm pretty small for my age. He then undressed me and completely once again took advantage of me and violated me. He then threatened me and told me if I told anyone that he would hurt me. What happens next is heartbreaking. Like and follow for part three. Story time on how I found out my best friend was sleeping with my boyfriend while on the phone with me. Okay, so boom, let's jump right into it. So I was in what I later realized was a very bad relationship. But at the time, this dude was like a religion to me. I was crazy about him. My best friend at the time, sort of a mean girl, but I wasn't very good at making friends, so I put up with her being cruel to people. She would never do anything to hurt me, right? Anyways, that relationship started getting abusive, but I kept with it because, you know, I was young and stupid. I convinced myself that if I tried a little harder, everything would just fix itself. It didn't, and after a few months, we broke up. Sometime later, I was at a party, and my best friend was a bit drunk, and that's when she told me while laughing the entire time how she and my ex were sleeping with each other literally two weeks after we started dating and it gets worse like and follow for part two part two on how i found out my best friend was sleeping with my boyfriend while on the phone with me okay so boom like i said my relationship with my boyfriend became abusive so we broke up fast forward a couple weeks and i was at a party with my best friend and she was a bit drunk she told me while laughing the entire time how she and my ex were sleeping with each other literally two weeks after i started dating him then she goes in details about how they would do the nasty while he was talking to me on the phone mind you she's laughing while saying this she went into detail on all the ways and places they used to sneak around to sleep with each other and this was the girl i would cry to when my ex would abuse me she didn't seem to have any idea that what she was saying was literally messed up she actually thought that i would find it funny too safe to say that that friendship ended be careful for fake friends out there y'all story time on how i caught my dad sleeping with my sister his biological daughter okay so boom let's jump right into it so my mom passed away when i was 10 years old me my dad and sister grieved the loss of our mom slash wife and honored her as best as we could but the loss of our mom hit our dad pretty rough due to the loss for about four years he continued to suffer from depression but recently my dad has been happy the happiest i've seen him in a long time and it kind of came out of nowhere but of course i was happy for my dad i'm now 14 and my sister is 12 and everyone always says how much my little sister looks like my mom literally my mom's twin and mini me i thought nothing of it but little did i know my sister looking like my mom would make my dad do some disgusting things like and follow for part two part two on how i caught my dad sleeping with my sister his biological daughter okay so boom like i said after my mom passed away my dad became depressed until a couple years later he just wasn't watch part one to understand now i'm 14 and my sister's 12 and everyone is saying my sister looks like my mom 
literally twins she is the mini me of my mom and i guess my dad seen this too and he became obsessed with my little sister he would dress my little sister up as my mom and even became way too affectionate with her for some reason my little sister liked this attention but like i knew it was wrong but i didn't know how far my dad would take it one day i was in my room and i heard moaning and it sounded like my sister and it was coming from my dad's room so i go over there and yeah it's exactly what y'all think i called and told my auntie and now my dad's in jail we're living with our auntie and my sister's in counseling be safe story time on how my mom forced me to be a lesbian okay so boom let's jump right into it i'm currently 14 years old and being raised by my single mother my dad wanted nothing to do with me and left my mom since she didn't want to terminate the pregnancy also my mom found out that my dad was cheating on her and gave her an incurable std my mom was devastated and grew a hatred for my dad my mom of course put him on child support and made sure she ruined his life and it honestly worked my mom gets checks every month as well well as never lets my dad even speak to me which i don't mind because he's kind of an a-hole and he clearly shows that he wish i was never born well once my mom got revenge from my dad she still really hated him like she despised that man and she hated my dad so much she started to grow a hatred for men my mom currently dates a woman who i love because i basically have two moms but her hatred for men oozed into my dating life like and follow for part two Part 2 on how my mom forced me to be a lesbian. Okay, so boom, like I said, because of what my dad did, my mom's hatred for men oozed into my dating life. Watch part 1 to understand. So when I would tell my mom about my crushes on boys, she always seemed so disgusted. And my mom told me I need to try dating girls and not boys because boys are stupid. I even tried bringing a boy over and she yelled at me. But when I bring girls over, she literally doesn't care. I decided to listen to my mom and I experimented. And you know what? I actually fell in love with a girl. But after a year of dating, we had a nasty breakup. I moved on and I met a guy. I found out I don't care about genders and if I like you, I just like you. But I'm definitely bi and not just lesbian. But my mom wants me to erase men from my brain. My mom is hurt by my dad and I understand her, but I just want to be true to who I am. I can't go out with boys, talk to boys, text boys, be on the phone with boys, just nothing. She's literally forcing me to be with and only surrounded by girls. What do I do? This story tells me how my jealous stepsister cut all of my hair off when I was asleep. By the way, we're calling her Jamie. So growing up, me and Jamie never got along. She always talked bad about my mom and how my mom broke her family apart. She always had a problem with me, but I'd ignore her. Jamie was very insecure too. She always compared how he looked and would always say I was spoiled. And she only said that because last Christmas I received way more presents than her. But that was because my dad got me those presents. One day we got in an argument over cheese curls. She was upset because I took the last of it and she pushed me and knocked all the cheese curls on the floor. My mom came in the kitchen asking what happened. I told her what Jamie did. So my mom gripped her up by the neck and told her to go into her room and think about what she has done to me. Jamie stayed in her room all day she never came back out to apologize night come and i went into my room to go to sleep as i was sleeping i felt something touching my head when i got up i saw all my hair on my pillow and jamie the scissors if y'all want to know what i did after that let me know down below in the comments this is part two of how my jealous stepsister cut all of my hair off when i was asleep so after I woke up out of my sleep, I saw all my hair on my pillow and Jamie with scissors. I've never screamed so loud in my life. I tried to get back at Jamie, but she had scissors in her hand and threatened to cut me if I didn't back up. It was like she wanted to physically harm me. So I took the little karaoke machine and threw it at her, but it fell on her leg and she started crying. I was confused because the karaoke machine wasn't even that heavy. Jamie's dad walked into the room asking what happened and Jamie said that I threw the karaoke machine at her. And my stepdad yelled at me asking, why would you do that? And then asked me what happened to my hair. I pointed at Jamie and said, Jamie cut all of my hair off. My stepdad looked at me like I was crazy and picked up Jamie and took her to the bathroom. I was mad because I knew Jamie was faking it. Then I went to my parents' room and told my mom that Jamie cut all of my hair off. If y'all want to know what happened after that, let me know down below in the comments. This is part three of how my jealous stepsister cut all of my hair off when I was asleep. So after I threw the karaoke machine at Jamie, she pretended to be hurt and my stepdad picked her up and took her into the bathroom. I quickly ran into my parents' room and I told my mom that Jamie cut all of my hair off. My mom got upset and asked my stepfather, did he not see my hair? He said, well, I threw the karaoke machine at Jamie. I yelled and told him that Jamie cut all of my hair off, which is the reason why I threw the karaoke machine at her. And she's faking it. My stepdad turned to Jamie and asked her, did she really do that? Jamie lied at first and said no. When me and my mom walked into the bathroom, she said yes, and that she only did it because my mom beat her. My mom was so confused. My stepdad said, you beat my child? 
After this, it get real messy, and I don't know if you guys want me to get into it, but let me know down below in the comments if you guys want to know what happened after that. This is part four for my jealous stepsister cut all of my hair off when I was asleep. I wasn't really expecting to make a part four because it gets messy after this, but since y'all asked for it, here I go. So after Jamie cut all of my hair off and lied and told her dad that the reason why she cut my hair off because my mom beat her, her dad got really upset and actually thought my mom hit her. So our parents got into a whole argument and my mom was upset because... He wasn't believing her. And my mom knew it was her word against his daughter and that there was no convincing. So my mom decided to leave. After 30 minutes of me and my mom packing up her things, Jamie went to her dad crying, saying that she lied and that my mom didn't beat her and that she apologized for cutting my hair. Her dad was really upset and made her apologize to me and my mom. Her dad apologized for not believing my mom, but it took my mom some time to come around. But at the end, everyone made peace and we were all good. Crazy thing is, after the whole situation was over, I was still bald. Imagine falling in love with your dad, your biological dad. Then imagine getting pregnant by your dad. Now imagine your dad murdering you and your son, then turning around and taking his own life. Well, that's exactly what happened in this incest triple murder suicide case of Stephen Paddle and Katie Rose. Okay, so boom. It all started when Stephen was 20 years old and met his 15 year old girlfriend Alyssa in a chat room on the internet. They fell in love and Stephen drove all the way from New York to Texas to get Alyssa and they ran away together. And of course, soon after, she got pregnant. Alyssa then gave birth to their daughter Denise. And this is where things took a turn and Alyssa started seeing a change in Steven. He started getting angry a lot, throwing tantrums, throwing objects around the house, just breaking things. And he had a weird obsession with weapons. This wasn't the guy Alyssa knew from the chat rooms. But things got more disturbing when Steven started abusing the baby. When the baby would cry, he would take her and shake her and even pinched her so hard he was leaving bruises on her. He then took it a step further and when she would cry, he would take the baby and put her body inside of a cooler and shut it. Then he would leave the baby in there where obviously she can suffocate and right when she's about to lose air, he would take her out the cooler. This guy was sick. Alyssa, after seeing how angry and abusive Stephen was to their baby, she decided to give Denise up for adoption and of course Stephen agreed and she was still under one years old. This is where Denise is adopted and becomes Katie Rose. She went to school, she loved art, and she had a loving family. Years goes on by and Katie is now 18 years old preparing for college. Meanwhile, Stephen and Alyssa, her biological parents, had two more daughters. She decided to have more kids with Steven because she thought they were older and more mature and ready for a family this time. So now that Katie is 18 years old, she wants to know where she comes from and meet her biological parents and her adoptive parents was okay with it. She finds Steven and Alyssa and starts getting to know them. Then she packed her bags to actually go visit them and meet her little sisters. When Katie got there, this is where things got weird and inappropriate. Steven started wearing skinny jeans and tight shirts. Things got even weirder and inappropriate. Steven started sleeping with her in her room, but just on the floor. And of course his wife Alyssa found that weird and they got into a huge argument. Alyssa eventually moved out, took her two daughters, and filed for divorce. But Stephen stayed home with Katie. Not too long after his ex-wife Alyssa moved out, she read her 12-year-old daughter's diary. Her diary said things like, my dad calls her baby. My dad said she's my stepmom. He doesn't want me to call her sister, but Katie is my sister. Does she see me as her daughter or sister? After reading her daughter's diary, Alyssa in shock calls Stephen and asks what's going on. He replies, I thought you knew that we were in love. Alyssa called the cops to report this ancestral behavior, but the cops just talked to Stephen and Katie and they did nothing. Couple months later, Stephen and Katie moves to North Carolina and they get married and she's pregnant AF. And his mom and her adoptive parents were there for support. And eventually, Katie gives birth to their son. Couple months later, everything caught up to them and they were arrested for adultery and incest. The bond was $1 million, but somebody bonded him out. But there was a protective order between them. So Katie went back to go live with her adoptive parents and Stephen went back home. And Stephen's mom now had full custody of their son. As they awaited trial, something came over Katie and she did not want to be with Stephen anymore. When Stephen called to talk to her, she told him she wanted a divorce. 
and Steven becomes angry and dangerous. Exactly one week after the call with Katie, he then goes to his mom's house and takes his son, then goes home with his son, then covers his baby's face and suffocates him. Like for part three. Falling in love with your dad, then having a baby with your dad, then getting murdered by your dad, and he also murders your baby, then he turns around and takes his own life, part three. Okay, so boom, like I said, he takes the baby home, covers his mouth, and suffocates him. And after he's done suffocating his own son, he places the body in the closet and shuts it. He then drives from North Carolina to New York all night nonstop. He goes to his daughter's adoptive parents' home, park near the front and stalks her. The next morning, Katie and her adoptive dad goes into the car and starts driving. Steven follows and catches them at the stop sign. Then he just starts shooting nonstop until both of them are murdered. Then he went to a hotel's parking lot and he took his own life. Triple murder suicide, including his daughter slash wife, his baby boy that he had with his daughter slash wife, his daughter's adoptive dad, and then himself. Steven was 40 and Katie was just 18. And unfortunately, that's the case of Steven Paddle. This story time is why I stopped being friends with the girl because her dad was a pervert. And we're calling her Kim. So me and Kim became friends at school. Over time, we realized we lived close together. So she started coming over to my house and I started going over to hers. She had five brothers and she was the only girl. Whenever I'd come over to her house, I'd say hello to everyone, but her dad was always excited to see me. He'd immediately run and give me a hug. Over the past couple months, he'd give me a hug and a kiss on the cheek. He said that I was his new little girl. I felt uncomfortable with it, but I went and told my friend Kim, and she said, he's just glad you're here, and you're like family now. I was like, okay, I guess, and I would just ignore it. Thanksgiving come up and I went over to her house for a plate. Her dad opened up the door and gave me a hug and a kiss as usual. I walked in the house and he said, you need to eat to keep that booty plump. I laughed in nervousness. And he slapped and squeezed my butt. There's more that happened after this. Let me know if you guys want a part two. This is part two of why I stopped being friends with the girl because her dad was a pervert. So remember how I told y'all I came over for Thanksgiving? Her dad slapped and squeezed my butt. I was weirded out, but I laughed to hide how nervous and anxious I was. After I get a plate of food and I sit down with Kim, I told her her dad slapped my butt. And she was like, yeah, okay, as if she didn't believe me. So again, I ignored the situation. As the day goes on, everyone is playing board games, laughing, and eating desserts. I had cheesecake, and I'm lactose intolerant, and you know how that went. I left the family for a few minutes, and I go to the bathroom. When I was all finished, I opened up the door, and there was Kim's dad just sitting there smiling at me. I was like, oops, my bad. You were probably waiting for a while. Here you go. And I tried to move out of the way, but then he says, I don't need to go to the bathroom. He pushes me back in by the hips and locks the door. It gets really bad after this. Y'all let me know if I should make a part three. This is part three of why I stopped being friends with the girl because her dad was a pervert. So after her dad pushes me back into the bathroom and locks the door, he's sitting there smiling at me and I asked him very nervously if I did something wrong. He was like, yes, you haven't been spending time with daddy and he likes jiggle my breasts in a weird way. At this point, I was backing up because he starts acting weird. Then he starts unzipping his pants and gets closer to me. And guys, their bathroom wasn't that big. I immediately took the Windex that was on top of their toilet and sprayed it into his eyes and quickly ran out of the bathroom. After this, her dad starts yelling. While I'm coming downstairs, everyone asks what's going on. I told the whole family what Kim dad has done and one of their little brothers yells at me calling me a whore. I then went to Kim saying, you gotta believe me, that's what happened. She's like, my dad would never do anything like that. Her mom walks up to me and tells me that I should leave. I starts crying and then her mom yells at me and tells me to go home. So I left and went home crying. After that, I never went back over to her house. This story of time is about how my boyfriend exposed my nudes to everyone at school. By the way, we're calling him Keith. So I've built my boyfriend Keith for four months. He seemed pretty cool and chill and very outgoing. He played basketball and was very popular in school. So when he started talking to me, I felt very special. But as time went by, he wasn't the guy who I thought he was. He was pretty self-entitled, cocky, and he got annoying. He expected everything to be handed to him. Anyway, throughout the relationship, he'd always ask for nudes, but I always tell him no because I'm not that type of girl to send any guy nudes. He'd always get mad at me and say couples are supposed to do that type of stuff, but I didn't give in. I'd always take pictures of myself because I liked my body, but I would never send them to anyone. One day, Keith comes over to my house. We chill for a little bit, and then my mom had called me. And then when I had came back, 
I saw him on my phone. When I snatched my phone from him, he sent the pictures that I took of myself and sent them to his phone. It get really reckless after this. This is part two of how my boyfriend exposed my news to everyone in school. So after he snuck into my phone and sent my news to himself, I got mad at him and told him to delete them. He tries to justify why he should keep them, but I say no because they were private. So then he shows me he's deleting them. After that, I kicked them out of my house for invading my privacy. Next day, I get ready for school. I text my boyfriend good morning as usual, but he didn't respond, which I thought was weird. When I get to school, everyone is staring at me. One of the basketball players at my school came up to me and said, you're wild. I was like, what? When I get to class, one of the girls sitting in front of the class said, girl, you're bold, and I'm still confused. When I sat down at my seat and I opened up my phone, I went through Snapchat, watching everyone's stories, and I saw my nudes on one of Keith's friend's story. After this, it gets terrible. This is part three of how my boyfriend exposed my news to everyone at school. So after I saw that Keith sent my news to one of his friends, his friends exposed my news on Snapchat. I got upset when lunchtime hit. I came into the lunchroom and everyone was staring at me. One of my best friends came up to me and asked me if I posted my news online. And I told her no and explained what Keith probably did. That lunchtime hit and we went around searching for him, but he wasn't there. I didn't know what to do, but my friends tried to convince me to go to the counselor, but I was embarrassed and I didn't want anyone to know about them or for them to tell my parents. I tried texting him Keith on why did he do that? Why did he send those people my pictures? But he just blocked me. I wasn't even sad about it no more. I just got upset. So I called my older brother about it and I told him what Keith did. And he said he'd be at my school at the end of the day and that he'll handle the whole situation. So school ends and everyone is leaving out. Me and my best friend walk up together to meet up with my brother. When I get outside, all I see is my brother and his friends jumping Keith. It gets crazy after this. Let me know if you guys want to part four. This is part four of how my boyfriend exposed my news to everyone in school. Like I said earlier, I was supposed to be meeting up with my brother after school, but I saw him and his friends jumping my boyfriend Keith. Everyone was crowded around him, and you can tell that Keith was getting it bad. His lip was busted, two black eyes, hands were bleeding, and his clothes were ripped up, and he had bruises on his legs and arms. And all his friends backed up, and the one who posted the news wasn't there. By the time I reached down to the crowd, the cops came, and I'm pretty sure it was probably because the school called. And I was trying to stop my brother and pull him off of Keith, but him and his friends just kept going at him. When the cops came storming in, they all hopped out of their cars. They screamed at everyone, telling everyone to back up. By the time they reached the center, they arrested my brother and his friends, and they had to get an ambulance for Keith. My brother tried to escape, but they tased him, and he fell to the ground. At this point, it gets really sad. To be honest, I don't even think y'all actually want to know what happened after that, but let me know down below. This is part five of how my boyfriend exposed my news to everyone in school. So after the fight broke up, the cops were called and they arrested my brother and his friends, but Keith had to get an ambulance. Afterwards, I went home and my friends came with me. At this point, I had to tell my parents. They were really disappointed, but they weren't hard on me. They ended up going to my school, talked to my counselors and all the teachers about it, which was very embarrassing for me. They bought in one of the students, who was Keith's friend, that actually posted the pictures. Some other stuff went down, but... We were able to press charges, ask my brother, my parents bailed him out. But Keith tried pressing charges against my brother, but since I was already pressing charges against him for exposing my pictures, he ended up having to drop the charges because it was too much going on. Some other stuff went down in between, but it's too much to explain. But at the end of it all, I won the case. Keith and his friends ended up having to leave the school, and of course, I broke up with Keith. But my news will forever circle around the internet. Travis the Chimp attacked and ate a woman's face off and turned her into this. Trigger warning is pretty graphic. You can find her before and afters online. Okay, so boom. Travis the Chimp was adopted for $50,000 by a couple, Sandra and Jerome Harold. They got him when he was just three days old and raised him in Stanford, Connecticut. But they didn't raise him like a pet or exotic animal. They raised him like he was a human. This chimpanzee drunk wine, drove cars around the block where residents could see him, watched TV, he cooked. He was popular with residents, including officers, and when he played with kids, he even knew how much strength to use without hurting them. Travis was also a animal actor that appeared in commercials. He was loved and a local celebrity, but everything changed when eventually Jerome Harold, the husband and animal dad, passed away to stomach cancer. They also lost their real human daughter to a car crash four years prior. Now, Sandra, the animal mom, was left alone with Travis and they only had each other. Sandra gave him the finest foods and made him drink wine and tossed them glasses. They took baths together 
and cuddled in the bed that they shared. So they slept together. Eventually, as Travis got older, around 14 years old, which is a fully grown chimpanzee, the older he got, the more aggressive and defiant he got and was harder to control him. Travis had the strength of five adult human men at his big age. In Connecticut, you're actually not supposed to own a chimpanzee over 50 pounds. Travis was over 50 pounds, but of course, law enforcement, well, they didn't enforce anything. Because again, Travis was a star and a local celebrity. Now in comes Sharla, who was Sandra's good longtime friend who was paid to help look after Travis. This is before Travis completely attacked, mauled, and ate her face. But as you can see, she knew Travis ever since he was little, so most of his life. One day, Travis was all over the place and a bit jittery, so Sandra, the chimp's human mom, gave him some Xanax to help him calm down. She then called Sharla, her good friend, to come over and help calm Travis down as well. Unfortunately, all hell broke loose, like for part two. Sandra, the chimp's human mom, called her good friend Sharla to help Travis calm down, after also giving him some Xanax to help him calm down. Once Sharla arrived, Travis the chimp had taken his human mom Sandra's car keys and was leaving because remember this was a driving chimpanzee. To stop Travis from leaving and get him back into the house, Charlotte took Travis's favorite toy which was a Tickle Me Elmo. She waved his favorite toy, the Elmo doll, to get his attention but unfortunately she definitely got his attention in a bad way. Travis the chimp flew into a rage and started violently mauling and attacking Sharla and eating part of her face. Sandra the mom saw the attack by Travis on her friend and tried to stop Travis by stabbing him multiple times with a butcher knife. But he didn't stop, he kept on attacking Sharla. Sandra then called 911 in her car. This is why you shouldn't have exotic animals as pets, part three. Okay, so boom, like I said, Sandra called 911. If you haven't heard the call, go ahead in part two. When the cops arrived on the scene, Travis then ran to the cop car and tried to open the door. When the door wouldn't open, he started hitting the car and that's when the cops went ahead and shot him multiple times. This is where Travis went back into the house and died in front of his cage. But this just showed you how strong he was after being stabbed multiple times and shot multiple times. He still had the strength to walk into the house and then die in front of his cage. Carla was airlifted to a hospital and by a miracle, she survived. He ripped off her eyelids, tore off her nose, gouged out and ate her eyes and almost tore one of her arms off. Charlotte's jaw was entirely dislocated and she was left brain damaged and permanently blind with no hands or fingers. She sued and ended up getting $4 million. She underwent face transplant surgery and this is how she's currently doing. Unfortunately, Charlotte's new hands and fingers was rejected by the body, but fortunately, her face transplant was a success. Sandra, the chimp's mom who lost now her chimpanzee, her husband and her daughter, passed away a few months later due to an aneurysm. A brain aneurysm to be exact. Leave the exotic animals alone, guys. As a mother, one of your primary responsibilities is to protect your kids. This woman murdered her kids and left them in her freezer for two years. Trigger warning. This woman, Michelle Blair, both tortured and murdered two of her four kids. Their bodies were found when officers came to evict the family from their apartments, where they found the kids' bodies stored in the freezer. She was arrested and later on confessed to investigators. She said that she became enraged after finding out her nine-year-old son was allegedly sexually assaulting her older son, Matthew. Michelle Blair then stated she didn't intend on killing Stephen, but was proud she did. She put a bag over his head, choked him with a belt, punched him, and burned him with scolding hot water. She then wrapped him in his favorite blanket and placed him in the freezer. Nine months later, her daughter was her next victim, like for part two. This woman murdered two of her four kids and stored them in the freezer for two years, part two. After killing her nine-year-old son, her daughter was her next victim. Nine months later, she found out her 13-year-old daughter, Stoney, was allegedly sexually assaulting that same older brother, Matthew, as well as Stephen, the brother who was just killed. Michelle Blair admitted to intentionally killing her daughter. I punched her, I put a bag over her head until she lost consciousness. 
She also said she threw scolding hot water at her daughter and punched her in the head many times. She also starved her by limiting her food to oatmeal once a day. They then got into a physical altercation and at that point she took her 13 year old daughter and strangled her with a black shirt. Then suffocated her with a black bag. Once she was done killing her, she made her oldest daughter take her little sister's deceased body and put it in the freezer. On top of Stephen, she murdered nine months earlier. Like for part three. This woman murdered two of her four kids and stored them in the freezer for two years. Part three. After murdering her two kids, she then took the two surviving kids out of school so that no one would grow suspicious of the other two missing. There is a high possibility that Michelle Blair was simply abusing her children throughout the years. If the children did in fact abuse each other, it might have been the result of abuse received by their mother. Michelle would be eligible for the death penalty if it existed in Michigan, but it does not. She has been charged with two counts of felony murder, two counts of premeditated murder, and one count of torture in the children's death. She has been sentenced to life in prison without parole. Visitation to her surviving kids has been suspended and parental rights permanently terminated. But she still says, if I had a chance to do it again, I would. In court, she was found saying, I feel no remorse for the death of those demons. Story time about how my fiance got me pregnant, then left me and married a man. Okay, so boom, a lot was said in that title alone. So it all started when I commented on an Instagram post of a handsome man. This handsome man then followed me and slid into my DMs. You are so beautiful. Call me. Things went on from there and he eventually asked me to move in. So... I did. We quickly got to know each other and I fell in love. I then learned of his testimony. He was a gay man who went to church and was delivered. Hallelujah. He was no longer gay and now was a straight man walking with God. I believed him and believed that this was his new truth. So I went on with our relationship. I got pregnant and then he proposed and we were set to get married in love. Or so I thought. Things took me by storm when one day I woke up and my fiance left me for a man. Like for part two. Story time on how my fiance got me pregnant, then left me and married a man part two. Okay, so boom, like I said, he was delivered, hallelujah, and no longer gay. A straight man walking with God. He proposed and I got pregnant and we were set to be married in love. Or so I thought. Things took me by storm and one day I woke up and my fiance left me. And not only did he leave me, but he left me pregnant for a man and married that man the same day our wedding was set for i'm heartbroken but i gotta be strong for my baby be careful out there story time on how i got caught stealing tampons yes i know tampons anyways this was when i was in sixth grade and at the time i didn't even start my period but my best friend katrina did she'd get really cute pads and tampons the one with butterflies and flowers and i was so jealous because i wanted to keep those cute packets in my purse and take them into the bathroom so one day after school i go into a pharmacy and i see the exact same tampons that my friend katrina had but they were like 24 dollars, and i didn't have that so i stuffed a box of tampons in my book bag and i tried to walk out but before i get close to the door an employee stops me and takes me into a room and guys when she found out what i stole I didn't even get in trouble. She actually bought them for me, and she bought me Tylenol. This story time is from a follower on why she regrets getting breast implants. She had breast implants, and then she had to get them removed, and now she has no left breast at all. She says she wants everyone to know her experience before making a decision of getting them. By the way, we're calling her Chloe, and at the time, she was 23. Spring of 2018 is when she felt ready to get work done on her breasts. Chloe was always the skinny type, and she felt like her breasts would never grow because she's been an A cup since 7th grade, and she said she wasn't ever insecure about them. It was just something she wanted for herself, so she saved up to get the procedure done, and she went to her appointment and then finally got her implants put in. The doctor told her it would take 6 to 8 weeks to heal and 3 months for everything to sit in place, and she'd be alright. So she expected the soreness and tenderness, but even after 3 months, her breasts were still in pain, and at 4 months, the pain was going away way but she couldn't feel either her breasts and she noticed her left breast had turned completely black and that's not even the worst part life of part two this is part two of why chloe regrets getting breast implants like i said earlier chloe got her breast implants done and she couldn't feel either of them and her left breast had turned completely black it didn't happen in one day she saw a discoloration at first but then it gradually turned black also those four months she felt fatigue nauseous sick all the time 
After seeing what was happening to her breasts, she went to the emergency room and they had planned to take them out. The implants were black. She was told it was because fungus had made its way into her bloodstreams. They ended up taking both of her implants out and her left breast she had to get completely removed because the tissue was dying and now her breast is more deflated than before she got the implants. End of the story, she don't think everyone's body is made for these type of surgeries and she wish she was told this that this could be a complication before even getting them.